Heavenly Father, we gather to remember those who lost their lives on that fateful day, to comfort those who lost friends and loved ones, and recommit ourselves to the task of ensuring that this never happens again. Based on what we have seen at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, which uh, I'd like to thank them for inspiring us, where in their training room they have a picture of the biographies and 8 by 10s of all the crew members and the civilians that were lost in the pressure. We brought that idea to the graphics department here at NAFC and uh, let their design team go out. And what they came back with for us is what you see right here essentially unchanged. So with the USS Thresher, there was not a submarine uh, safety program in effect at that time period. It was a very advanced submarine, but it still had some design aspects from World War II. It did not have an emergency main ballast tank. It had a uh, main ballast tank uh, recovery uh, plan, which basically meant the thresher would come up to close to test depth and it would blow the tanks to bring it up to the surface. One of the things that they tried to do in the thresher losing depth was they tried to blow the, the main ballast tanks. When they did that, the, the main ballast tanks weren't adequate enough to provide enough buoyancy to bring the boat back to the surface. There were other several of the problems that occurred, but that was, that was one of the main ones. So the submarine safety program that the Navy instituted in 1963 that provides maximum reasonable assurance that a, a flooding casualty would not occur uh, in the event that it would occur, that uh, we'd be able to recover the, the, the submarine. The submarine building is a team event, and uh, you know, as such, everyone that is involved in that event is very important, and I would ask them to always uh, think about the, the work they're doing, no matter how small or how large the task, and, and think about the effect that it could have uh, if it's not done appropriately and properly.